Hey all my creative friends, welcome to the Saturday Short, 8 watercolor tips for beginners. Let's jump right in. Tip 1 is to plan your project. Know what you want to use for colors. Here I have my palette set out. I have a couple of different colors that I've chosen. I know the brushes that I'm going to use. Two containers of clean water, my paper towels, my paper already. I have an idea of the light areas and the dark areas that I want for my painting. What I've found is helpful is to do a pre preliminary sketch in a sketchbook so you know the, the dark areas that you want and the lighter areas. And it all helps you to, to be prepared for your painting project. Number two, don't outline the shapes that you're painting. And I'll just give you a little example here. I have a couple of sketches of apples and what you might tend to do if you're just starting out doing watercolor is to go around the edge like that and to do the outline and then go back and fill it in later or a minute later but even even a minute later that paint will dry and then you'll start to get an edge here right along here you'll get an edge so the right way to do this would be to start at one side and keep bringing that paint down and keep a, keep a wet edge as much as you can so it's all blended. Whereas over here, I go over it I start to fill it in with paint, the shape, and I always have that line there. Number three is to use the right amount of water. Get used to how much water to use for your paper and your paint and for the effect that you want. For example, if you're painting a sky and you're pre-wet the sky area, this paper doesn't have a lot of absorption some paper does. So if you go in too early and you try to put color in too early it's gonna get really light or it's gonna bloom, it's gonna go out from the paint that you're putting down and you're not gonna have as much control. If you go in with too dry a brush you're going to get texture. If you have a dry brush and paper that has a lot of tooth to it, a lot of texture to it, that's going to give you texture which sometimes you want, but for the most part, since this is watercolor, we want that water and paint to flow around and go where we push it with the brush. Number four is to not to overwork your paint. When you're putting color in, here I just did a bunch of studies of some poppies. They're not very good, but I was I was trying to do a poppy painting. So I just practice on different color and technique and shape and everything else. But in this one right here, you can see how I've, I've added different colors and I've done it when it was real wet and it kind of tends to go towards that, that real muddy look, which you don't want. You want nice colors clean colors and you want to use clean water so when you start to put on too much color too fast and not to let the layers dry you you get a muddy look number five when you're starting out don't worry about getting too much detail and going in and giving getting every little thing that you see but you can have a lot more fun by just painting loosely and adding colors and letting them flow together and doing different shapes and getting to know your paper, your brushes, and your paint. So don't worry about the detail. Just kind of let it, let it flow around. You can drop in paint and whether you're painting a sky or trees or water, just have fun with it. Tip six is to use a lot of contrast in your paintings. Get a, a wide 
variety of tones in your painting and you can really have your subject pop out. This is a photograph that I took this past summer of a rowboat in the water. And because the water is so dark and the rowboat is light, that it really brings that subject out, which is the rowboat, or brings the subject out and helps that to pop, as I say. So recently I did this painting and I didn't go quite as dark with the water, but still it's dark enough around the rowboat and around the rope that it defines the different areas that you want. So use a wide tonal range in your paintings to give a lot of interest and variety. Tip seven, to let the white of your paper be the white that you want. And again, I'll use this painting as an example. I didn't use any white paint for the lightest areas here. I just had that in mind the whole time and painted around so that the paper is the white. Now there are some watercolor whites that you could use, but a lot of purists don't like to use them. They leave the white of the paper and you can, if you have some detailed areas, you can use a masking fluid and mask out little specks. Like I've done some paintings of snow on branches and you can put masking fluid on those branches and paint all around it and then take the masking fluid off and you have some really bright white. And finally, number eight would be to keep practicing. Practice, practice, practice. You're only gonna get better by making mistakes and learning how to use the different tools that you have at hand. So set aside some time every day or every other day or once a week and set up your space, have a space all set up that you can just sit down at and start working and start practicing. And I guarantee you that with lots of practice, you'll get better. Thanks for taking the time to watch this. I hope those tips were helpful for you. And if you have anything to add of your own, please feel free to do so in the comments below. And I look forward to seeing you next time.